What's going on everyone? Thank you for tuning in again. We got a really cool amplifier sent to me from Scott from Powerhog Audio. He has his own car audio company, amplifier, subs, you name it. And he got the kicker bug from our show that we do, the Rolling Thunders, uh, 8.30 every Friday. So yeah, we got this kicker KX600.1 old school amplifier here. Uh, it does have the end pieces here which I will install and I'll show you what it looks like with it on, but I wanna show you all the parts inside of it and on the outside here. So stick to the end to see the amp guts of this amplifier. Uh, all right, on the uh, output section here, we have eight gauge, just regular input terminals, uh, which is nice. It uses the same Allen key, which is the one that I have right here. Uh, it uses this Allen key for everything, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about using different Allen keys for the positive, the remote, the speaker wire, etc. And then we have our RCA in, we have our RCA out. And then another thing which is really cool about this amplifier, this thing is strappable. It has 3.5 millimeter uh, jacks for strapping two of these KX600s together, which is awesome. Uh, I know Kicker has strained it away from half bridge designs so there's no way this is a full bridge design and strappable, which is crazy. I didn't know that they had amplifiers like this back then that were strappable, which is just awesome. Now on the front, it has some varnishing. It has some, you know what I mean? You could see it has some age to it. Uh, this amplifier is in pretty good condition other than a couple of spots here and there. Um, shoot, this thing is almost as old as me. This is, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say quite as old as me, but uh, early 2000s. So that's awesome. Oh, also it has a input for the uh, base knob. So if you have like an ethernet, you can uh, run it there. And on the front, we have our uh, slanted uh, input terminals, remote, ground, and uh, 230 amps of fusing right there. So this thing is ready to dish out the power. All right, so hold on real quick. I'm gonna throw on these end caps to show you what this amplifier looks like uh, before we throw it on the dyno. You big dummy. <laughs> Man, these only go on one way and I somehow screw it up every time. All right, there we go. Yeah, and then these just take your uh, regular metric screws. Again, same Allen key for everything, which is really nice. And that's it, there we go. So this is what it looks like with the end caps on. Uh, pretty cool and stealthy. And you can see on the side there, uh, enough for the wires to come through. So you don't have to run them through, uh, you know, underneath the amplifier per se, you can run them out. Uh, awesome, yeah, they uh, still have the angled inputs, which is a pain for some builds, but you know, not everybody needs uh, angled inputs not everyone just wants you know regular styled inputs but i know kicker there's been talk that they're going to do away with the angled inputs which is cool in some ways um i like the angle inputs for those uh real clean looking builds you know where you have the wire going through your little particle board mdf floor to make everything look super clean you don't see any wires except what's going in the amplifier and especially with this with these end caps that was the whole idea of that so that you wouldn't see anything uh pretty cool but hey you know what some things just move on we outgrow things but uh yeah let's get to the amp dyno uh let's see what the kind of numbers this thing does okay so this amp says it does 300 rms at 4 ohms and 600 watts at 2 ohms respectively and that's at 1.5 percent thd which is different than how we rate things today. Uh, so let's see what kind of numbers we can get out of this thing. And today is the first time we're actually gonna run a test below two ohms. Wow, things are going pretty serious right now. So that we're gonna do a one ohm load test on this kicker amp. We're gonna see if it can handle the power. We're gonna see if it can still dish out the power whenever you do run it that low. Does it catch on fire? Does it blow up? Let's find out, stick towards the end. I'm telling you, this is gonna be a good video. All right, let's go.
All right, up first, we're gonna do the four ohm certified numbers, but we're gonna see what this does at four ohm certified and uncertified before we change our uh, resistive, AKA reactive load uh, to get a lower impedance so we can see what this amp does at two ohms and one ohm. So up first, four ohm certified, let's see what we can do. Okay, <laughs> not bad at all for this KX 600.1. We just did 416 watts at 4.4 ohms, which is our four ohm rating, close as we're gonna get at 1% THD certified. That ain't bad at all. All right, now we're gonna do four ohms uncertified up to about 10% THD and see what we can get on this amplifier. and 74 watts at, we're rising to 4.8 ohms that is just crazy uh, let's do another run see if we can get a little bit lower than that but that's still almost doing the 2 ohm rating at 4 ohms almost 5 ohms past clipping of course but still nonetheless let's see if we can beat 574 That's just insane. 603 watts at 4.5 ohms at only 3% distortion. We're doing the two ohm ratings of this amplifier, which is it's just insane because this is a 600 watt amplifier. So if you wire this at two ohms, nine chances out of 10, you're gonna see around 600 watts out of this amp, which is, this is just crazy. All right, so this is the first time with a new reactive load. We're actually wired at half ohm on this amplifier. And with RISE, we're gonna try to get that two ohm rating. Uh, we're gonna do a certified run first and see what we can come up with at two ohms. not as good as I was expecting uh, 569 watts at 2 ohms at 1% THD let's give that another go ahead ah, again it's not liking the certified at 1% THD at 2 ohms uh, oh you know what my voltage is actually kind of low you know what let me uh, see what's going on here all right, maybe that's why, because the voltage was lower. Um, my uh, power supply was on its three-stage charging for AGM batteries, and then this, this setting's for lithium technically, but we're gonna use it as a bench uh, power supply. So now we're at 14.5 volt. Good thing I had a uh, voltmeter hooked up here to see what was going on. So let's try that again to see if we have good voltage, if we can get past that 552. Reset, six watts, here we go. voltage coming from the power supply to the battery we were able to clamp an additional 100 watts at two ohms on the money at one percent thd now if that doesn't show that you know having the proper electrical is key i don't know what will so next thing we're going to do is the uncertified and see the most amount of power we can get out of this amplifier up to about 10 percent thd OK, 
Okay, so you can see we were able to get 702 watts out of this amp and we are literally at its stable impedance and we were at 2 ohms at 2.1% THD and this amp just said that's too much current for me I am good there's your power take it or leave it okay 740 watts out of it uh, all I did was turn the volume down on the head unit a little bit and uh, so I wouldn't clip so much and boom we got an extra 40 watts out of this thing which is pretty cool oh there's a little fan in here I can feel it there's a little fan so it's like hey you're getting me a little warm to uh, cool down now Scott wanted me to wire this down to 1 ohm um, knowing that it has great protection circuitry that you know this amplifier should not just catch up on fire so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to get the impedance lower um, now in my experience of what it's doing at 2 ohms it's probably gonna shut off at 1 but let's see if we can run it down there and see what happens and see what kind of power we can get out of this thing we're gonna try that 1 ohm load here 1.3 that's pretty good certified okay folks uh, before it even went into uh, protect there we were right around 1% THD still and we were able to get 615 watts out of this amp at 1.3 ohms I don't really want to go much lower because I feel like this amp is just it's, it's going to do the same thing and it's going to give out around the same amount of power at 2 ohms and 1 ohm which is just nice to know awesome results guys I mean we've seen way overrated not extremely overrated but it did its numbers and then some as always that kicker products do this thing was rated at what 300 watts rms at 4 ohms it did over 400 and at 2 ohms it was rated at 600 watts it did over the 600 watts and what's crazy is at the uncertified numbers is where you really see this amp shine and it really didn't even go very high into the distortion I think the highest was three or five percent at the very most we weren't even able to get up to the 10 percent thd and we got 600 watts at four ohms okay uncertified that's its two ohm rating and then at two ohms uncertified uh over 700 and almost 40 watts which is crazy and then as you've seen when we tried to wire it lower than two ohms the amp really was reaching its full potential. Um, as in, the amp was shutting off. It's like, okay, uh, too much current, uh-uh, I'm good. Here you go, I'm not gonna blow up on you, but here you go, here's about five, 600 watts for you. So, yes, you could wire lower on this amp. Um, do I suggest it? You guys silly, I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> Not entirely, but hey, if you know what you're doing and if you want to be a little bit louder for what you have, it, it'll work. It really will. Um, but if you want to run it at two ohms and be safe, you're still going to see almost at 600 watts anyway. And that's kind of the idea behind their products. So um, let's um, open this thing up. Let's see what kind of amp guts we got inside and see what's really powering this thing. All right, got my handy dandy screwdriver kit. Uh, I'm gonna try to open this up. If I can't get to seeing the amp guts, I'm sorry guys. I know some amps are built backwards where you can't really see the guts and all you can see is the green board. This might be the case, but let's see what we can do here. Oh, that's still hanging on there and it's probably because of these uh, inputs or up oh, yeah the inputs damn I really wish you could slide this 
Nope. Nope. I'm not gonna break it. I don't wanna uh, undo a solder connection and then be like, oh no, I have no amplifier. Um, so that's that. But here, I'll give you guys an idea of what I'm looking at here. Uh, you can see some transformers. Uh, it looks like it has one part of the board on top of the other. And you can see the trans. this is upside down. The transformers back there on that first pallet. Under there. I'm not sure if you can see. I don't got a phone to show you with a light, but believe me, transformers on the bottom and then it's got the uh, um, preamp section, I guess you want to call it, with the RCAs. Heck yeah. But I mean, shoot, it's an older amp and they designed amps differently, especially to fit in a compact space here. Um, sometimes you have to layer stuff and you have to build it a certain way. But otherwise, man, awesome amp. Thank you, Scott from Power Hog. Check out our Rolling Thunder podcast we do every Friday at 830. I'll leave the link in the description below. I'll leave a link for his website for his uh, company that he has, the Power Hog. He even has 15-inch uh, drivers, and I'm not sure if they're the 12s too, but they literally <laughs> act like the uh, spare cone for the Solo X, where you can just drop them in, and you don't have to glue and nothing, just screw it. That's it. And it's pretty cool that he has that, because uh, not many companies do that, where you know you can just have a uh, assembly that just goes back in, which is pretty cool. Um, again, thank you, Scott, and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.